Hello, and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver, and I'm a scientist, and this is Cindy Oliver, and she's a dog. A favourite claim by anti-vaxxers is that scientists, governments, and mainstream media don't want you to know the truth and are hiding important data from you. And if they're not outright hiding it, hiding it, they aren't talking about it enough. And they often make this claim when they are talking about mortality. Well, it turns out that there is quite a bit of mortality data that anti-vaxxers aren't talking about and are hiding from their followers. In this video, Cindy and I will be going back to the science and covering some of this mortality data that anti-vaxxers are hiding from you. But just before that, I just want to be clear that when I use the term anti-vaxxer, I am specifically referring to people who spread disinformation about vaccines. The term does not refer to people's individual vaccination status. The first thing that anti-vaxxers are hiding from you is that, sadly, it has always been the case that not everyone lives to old age. This chart here is based on data from 2005, well before COVID vaccines, and it shows the annual risk of death by age and sex in the UK. And it would likely be similar in most Western countries, although potentially a little higher in the USA, owing to the large number of gun-related homicides there. As you can see, by the time you reach the age of 35, your chance of dying in any one year is over one in a thousand if you are male. And by the time you reach 55, it's nearly one in 100. So although anti-vaxxers would like you to believe that no one died before now and present every death in a person under the age of 90 as a vaccine death, the data says otherwise. Of course, some anti-vaxxers are a little bit more sophisticated and talk about excess mortality. But even then, there is important data that they are hiding, namely that mortality is higher in unvaccinated people than in vaccinated people. And this has been covered in a number of studies, and we will just go over a few of them in this video. So the first piece of data comes from the Office of National Statistics in England, who have just updated their data on mortality by vaccination status. And they get this data by linking information from the 2021 census with people who have NHS numbers, people who can't be linked to not included in the data set. These records are then linked to the National Immunisation Management System and ONS death records. Now, obviously, this method means that the data set is a subset of the total population, but it does include about 91.6% of the population on the day of the census, which is pretty good. And importantly, the vaccination status of everyone in the database is known. There is no need to estimate the size of the unvaccinated population which has to be done when other methods are used. So all this ensures that the vaccinated and unvaccinated groups are correct, but there are still confounders. Firstly, older people were generally eligible for vaccination before younger people and also are more likely to be vaccinated overall. But we know that older people are going to have higher mortality rates. So the ONS account for this by using age standardised mortality rates. Now, there are other confounders that aren't accounted for, and interestingly, they act in opposite directions. Firstly, there is what is known as the healthy vaccinee effect. Basically, people who are terminal and expected to die shortly generally don't get vaccinated. Likewise, people who are acutely ill will put off vaccination until they have recovered. This means that shortly after age groups become eligible for vaccination, you will see an increase in mortality in the unvaccinated 
in that age group because the unvaccinated group has decreased in size and contains a higher proportion of terminal and acutely ill people than it previously did. Furthermore, people who get vaccinated are generally more likely to follow medical advice, which can improve their chances of having lower mortality. Countering this is comorbidities. People who had comorbidities that made them more likely to have poor outcomes if they caught COVID were prioritised for vaccination and also were more likely to be vaccinated in general. And as with older people, these people generally have higher mortality rates than the general population. Now, the data from the ONS is provided in an Excel spreadsheet, but I've plotted some of it to make it easier to see. The figures here show the age standardised death rate for all-cause mortality for vaccinated versus unvaccinated people by month from April 2021 to May 2023. The pink lines are the vaccinated and the blue lines are the unvaccinated. And just to be clear, you are considered vaccinated from the day you get your first dose. As you can see, mortality rates are consistently lower in the vaccinated compared with the unvaccinated across all time periods. However, you will notice that the difference in mortality rates for the unvaccinated compared with the vaccinated does decrease over time. There's two reasons for this. Firstly, in the early months, we are seeing the healthy vaccinee effect that I previously discussed. Secondly, you can only die once. So people who have already died either directly or indirectly from COVID have been removed from the data set and therefore aren't around to die later. And we know that the majority of people in England have been exposed to the virus. And we also see that if we look specifically at COVID and non-COVID mortality, the age standardised mortality rate is still consistently lower for those that are vaccinated. And I will cover later in the video why this is still the case for non-COVID mortality. The ONS statistics also looked at the effects of booster doses on mortality, and I will just read out their main findings to you. Monthly age standardised mortality rates, ASMRs, for deaths involving coronavirus, COVID-19, have been consistently lower for all months since booster introduction in September 2021 for people who had received a third dose or booster at least 21 days ago, compared with unvaccinated people and those with just a first or second dose. The ASMRs for deaths involving COVID-19 have been consistently lower for all months since fourth dose or extra booster in spring 2022 for people who had received at least a fourth dose or extra booster at least 21 days ago compared with unvaccinated people and those with just a first, second or third dose. Non-COVID mortality rates are similar, though slightly lower in people who have had a third dose or booster compared with unvaccinated people in the latter half of 2022 and in 2023. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are confounders in this data. But it is quite telling that it is showing the opposite of what anti-vaxxers are claiming without any data. And there are, of course, other studies that do account for confounders. And we'll have a look at one of them now. So this is a study here. And what they've done is they've compared non-COVID and all-cause mortality following either first or second doses of Pfizer, Moderna or J&J COVID vaccines with a match cohort who weren't vaccinated. 6,974,817 unique individuals were included in the study and they were aged 12 and over. 
non-COVID deaths were defined as deaths that did not occur within 30 days of a COVID diagnosis or positive test result for SARS-CoV-2. Vaccination status was assessed from December 14, 2020 through to June the 30th, 2021. And deaths were assessed until August 31, 2021 to allow for at least two months of follow-up. Importantly, they adjusted the results for confounders to account for differences between vaccinated and unvaccinated people. And the confounders that they looked at included age, sex, race, ethnicity, Medicaid status, history of COVID-19, number of combined outpatient and virtual visits, inpatient visits, emergency department visits, presence of frailty, Charlson comorbidity index, receipt of another vaccine within 14 days before, before or after the index date, neighbourhood median household income and neighbourhood education level. And this table here shows the results. It shows the hazard ratios for mortality of COVID vaccine recipients compared with unvaccinated comparison groups. So if the hazard ratio is below one, it means that mortality is lower in the vaccine group. And if the hazard ratio is above one, it means that mortality is higher in the vaccine group. And they have looked at non-COVID mortality, 30-day non-COVID mortality and all-cause mortality after the first and second dose of each vaccine. And they have also looked at unadjusted hazard ratios as well as hazard ratios adjusted for the confounders that I just went over. And as you can see, for all vaccines and all doses and all types of mortality, your risk of dying is lower if you are vaccinated. Also, to check the robustness of their analysis, they looked at the hazard ratios for trauma or injury hospitalisation following vaccination and found that it wasn't significantly different in vaccinated people compared to unvaccinated after adjusting for confounders, which is, of course, exactly what you would expect. If they had found a difference, it would suggest that there were other confounders that they hadn't accounted for. Now, of course, there could still be other confounders that haven't been accounted for, but the lower incidence of non-COVID and all-cause mortality in people who have been vaccinated is the exact opposite of what you would expect if anti-vaxxer claims about excess mortality were right. Could this be why they deliberately don't show this data and instead make vague nudge, nudge, wink, wink, claims from country-level data. And it's not just data showing that vaccinated people have lower mortality than unvaccinated people that anti-vaxxers hide. They also hide data that shows that getting COVID when you are unvaccinated increases your mortality risk from all causes. And this is one of many studies showing this. So what they did in this study is they identified people from Indiana who were infected with SARS-CoV-2 who had not been vaccinated, as well as people who had been vaccinated but had never been infected. They then searched for matches between the groups. And for each vaccinated person, they found a person who had been infected at around the same time who had the same age, sex, race, zip code, and number of comorbidities. And for those who don't live in the United States, which obviously I don't, um, what they call a zip code is what's called a postcode in Australia and the UK and possibly other countries. I'm not really sure about what they call it everywhere in the world, but I digress. They then followed the people from 30 days after the first vaccine or initial infection until February 2022 or until they were vaccinated or infected. This then kept the two groups as just vaccinated or just infected. And they compared rates of infection, all-cause ED, visits, hospitalisation and mortality. 
Now, in this video, I'm just going to cover the mortality results because that's what the video is about, but I will provide a link to the study in case you want to look at the other results. And I've also covered them in more detail in a previous video, which I'll also provide a link to. So this slide shows mortality. The blue solid line is vaccinated people who haven't had COVID and the grey dotted line is unvaccinated people who have had COVID. And as you can see, the incidence of death is much higher in those who have had COVID than those who have had a COVID vaccine. In fact, at six months, mortality is 37% higher in the previously infected compared with the vaccinated. And zero months on the graph is 30 days after either vaccination or infection. So these are not deaths that will be recorded as COVID because they are occurring after the initial infection is likely to have cleared, which strongly suggests that COVID increases your chance of dying even after the initial infection has passed. They also stratified the data by age group in the study. This slide shows the data for ages 20 to 39, 40 to 59, 60 to 79, and 80 plus. And as you can see, there was a statistically significant increase in mortality following COVID compared with vaccination across all age groups. Although obviously the mortality rate was higher overall in the older age groups. In fact, the only age group where the increase in mortality following COVID wasn't statistically significant was the 12 to 19-year-old age group where overall mortality was thankfully extremely low. Remember though, this is starting 30 days after infection. So the young people who have died from COVID are not included in these numbers. And there are many, many other studies that also show that there is an increase in mortality rates for unvaccinated people who have recovered from COVID compared with people who haven't had COVID. But anti-vaxxers aren't showing these studies to people. They just keep banging on about excess mortality and hiding the causes. Here's another study that was published in Nature Medicine that anti-vaxxers tend not to talk about. In this study, they looked at the risk of a number of different cardiovascular complications following COVID. This figure summarizes what they found. The chart on the left is the hazard ratio and anything to the right of the dotted line means an increased risk. The chart on the right shows the excess burden per 1,000 people. Towards the end, you'll see that it refers to MACE. This stands for Major Adverse Cardiovascular Events and includes myocardial infarction, stroke, and all-cause mortality. And as you can see, this is significantly elevated following COVID. And as I said, there are many, many more studies showing the same thing. The other data that anti-vaxxers don't tell you about is that there are many studies showing that being vaccinated doesn't just decrease your risk of dying from COVID. It also reduces your risk of major cardiovascular events after you have recovered from COVID. Here's one such study which is entitled Impact of Vaccination on Major Adverse Cardiovascular Events in Patients with COVID-19 infection. Now, what they did in this study is they looked at whether both partial and full vaccination protected against major adverse cardiovascular events following COVID. Partial vaccination meant 14 days or more after one dose of mRNA vaccine, and full vaccination meant 14 days or more after one dose of J&J vaccine, or 14 days or more after two doses of mRNA vaccine. It was quite a large study. There were 1,934,294 patients and 217,843 of them were vaccinated. 
And there are two reasons that there were more unvaccinated people than vaccinated. Firstly, the study started in March 2020 and everyone was unvaccinated then. Secondly, contrary to what some people claim, being vaccinated does in fact reduce your chances of getting COVID. So we would expect more unvaccinated people to get it. So they followed these patients for six months after infection and the results can be seen in this figure here. The red dotted line is patients who were fully vaccinated. The green dotted line is patients who were partially vaccinated. And the blue line is patients who were unvaccinated. And the shaded areas are the confidence intervals. And by the way, the first number under the figure is a typo. It should say 1,716,451. As you can see, people who are vaccinated are significantly less likely to suffer from major adverse cardiovascular events following COVID than people who are unvaccinated. In fact, fully vaccinated people are 41% less likely to have an event and partially vaccinated people are 24% less likely. And this helps explain why people who have been vaccinated have a lower rate of both COVID mortality and non-COVID mortality, something that anti-vaxxers never talk about and seem to want to hide. So in summary, there is a lot of data showing that unvaccinated people have higher mortality than vaccinated people. But anti-vaxxers are deliberately not talking about this data and are instead trying to make people think otherwise by just talking about excess mortality. Don't let them fool you. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I provide links in the video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked, shared or commented on the video, Double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And triple thank you to everyone who left a comment on my last video, which led to a record number of comments on my channel. Remember, the algorithm has no idea what the comments say unless they contain one of the weird trigger words that YouTube is targeting for automatic deletion. So anything you say can help. You could, of course, leave a nice comment about the video, but you could also insult me or say something nonsensical. It all helps. You could even just tell me what you ate for your last meal. In fact, everyone should do that just to confuse the trolls that don't actually watch the video. Anyway, I digress. Thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or little Cindy here a treat. We really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.